This is the word of God's grace brought to you by the Standing Church International. We're a life transforming church with a vision of raising a supernatural army for the Lord. Get ready to be blessed by God's word and experience miracles. Rising above weakness. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 16. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 3 to 4. Strengthen ye the weak hands, and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. God will save you on this mountain. What are the three things that will help you rise above weakness? Number one, Seeing God's perspective on issues. As we are going into July, seeing God's perspective on what? Issues. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given me, Paul was speaking, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. It's not God that didn't want him to be exalted above measure. It's, Satan does not like you being exalted above measure. So he will start discouraging you. He said, for these things, I begged the Lord three times that it might depart from me. How many of you have gone through discouraging seasons before? Or some moments of weakness, bouts, and you ask, Lord, just help me now. You know that, guess what? God did not say, I will remove the problem. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. That means that what you are looking at matters. Either it is the problem that besieges you or the grace that supports you. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So look at perspective now. Paul now said, most, he didn't say gladly. Most gladly therefore <laughs> will I rather glory. He didn't say that, well, I will just be glorying. I say I will rather Glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. That's perspective. That means that you can't see power if you don't rejoice in the midst of challenges. How many of you need the power of God resting upon you? You need to rejoice. This thing that happened to Paul is called perspective. He didn't have the right perspective before. He was just saying, God, take it away now. God, help me now. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. He said, so it's you I should be looking at. Let me be rejoicing so that this grace and power will come on me. That's perspective. He says, therefore, from that moment, therefore, if they slap him, <laughs> Paul will be crying and laughing. He said, why are you laughing and crying at the same time? He said, I take pleasure in infirmities. That means that his position had changed. Anytime Satan came to him, he said, say, you met me at home. Tell the devil when he comes to you, ease and tell him you met me at home. They deny you access to the job. You are about to start crying. No, no. Tell Satan, you met me at home. I like things like this because this is what God used to give me a better job. Glory to God. We're traveling for a meeting. We missed our flight. You know, missing flight can be very painful. Especially in a place where the next airport is not one hour away. Let me tell you how painful. It felt. It was as painful as this. The plane was in front of us. They had not closed the door. They were only wheeling the staircase away. It was not time for the flight to take off. We got there before they made their final boarding calls. And then you removed. And I was telling them, don't let me miss this flight. And then they removed that thing. And they removed it away. And they closed the door. And they said, if the pilot changes his mind, he will ask them to reopen the door. And we were looking at the plane. And the plane was moving. I was going. I almost ran to the front. <laughs> I didn't say, Pastor, I don't take no finance out. No man is supposed to be able to deny me now. No problem. <laughs> as you are moving, as you are doing that thing, I've crammed the name of your airline. And I know you. We will meet. 
in front. I will do you good when we meet. But I will remind you. I just I didn't say anything. I was just looking. Because you must control yourself. When bad things are happening, control yourself. What you say in that moment can resound in the realm of the spirit for a long time. Just control yourself. I sat down, I was looking. I started making calls. What do we do? The calls were looking for. I just said, let's eat humble chicken pie. <laughs> and find out the next car we can use to go all the way to Abuja. That was about four hours on road. But you know what our Thanksgiving was? As I was going, I was working on special. I said, well, we use the time to work. It's not a problem. I was calling. I was working on special. I was doing things. As we were getting to Abuja, some of our precious people came. They picked us. We had a good time with them. We went straight to the airport, entered a plane, came down, landed in Lagos by 7 p.m. The people in Lagos were expecting us around 11, 12. But is it not because you are alive that you still get there by 7? You say, I came late. You are alive. Thank God that they did not call us and say that something has happened to you. You will never have come. There's something to thank God for. So you have to see God's perspective on issues. God's perspective on issues is that our jet has come. God's perspective on issues is that now we have more than enough resources to be able to rent helicopters when we go for crusades. That I will finish Zaria in the night and the helicopter will fly me and bring me to Ibadan to do what I need to do Sunday morning. Not the one that I will sit down and be sleeping on streaming service. They just here lift me and drop me. That's perspective. But you know you can sit and say, we have been confessing that our plane has come. We have been confessing. See now, I don't even have money to charter jet. See if I can have money. Now, this prosperity thing, is it even working? It is going to the base of your faith. There's nothing that lands on this earth that to a degree is not trapped and limited by time. Use this thing I told you to manage expectations. There are principles of acceleration and speed. But as long as it lands in this earth, there is a limitation of time. Some way, somehow. In some way. No matter what. Once Jesus enters the womb of Mary, he must be there for nine months. So to be vexing that I don't have money to enter jet, is it not stupidity? At what age? What time? Say, but pastor, we do things from small. Am I not doing things that are already bigger than my age? I'm not out of timing. God will do it in his time. God will do it in his time. So there's no need to rush. I'm making good progress. If you don't know this, you're going to be doing yahoo yahoo for nothing. No. Save yourself all this stress of running from police up and down. You can have peace of mind. Some of you are angry. Your faith has been shipwrecked because you've not sold your first million this year. Yet, you have sown your first 200,000. Should you have sown it by normal chance? Yet, you have sown 100,000 three times, four times. Did that happen last year? Are you really pressed for time? So, some things happen over time. The kingdom of God runs on a seed principle. Nothing starts big. Everything starts from somewhere. Then it starts growing. Rejoice at the level you are part time. Life is in faces. Men are in sizes. Rejoice in your size part time. And leave your size part time. What's my size? My size is not the size of my account. My size is the size of my heart. How God's word has affected my heart and the projects that I can already deal without stress. Like building projects. I know some of you are confessing that you buy airport and this year you're already hungry. Because by the timeline you wrote in 2022, you should have owned like three airports. Because when pastor said, speak big things, that God created the heavens and the earth. And if he did it in six days, Two months, too much. So, dear Lord, I dare you. I don't give you two months because two months, too much. I'll give you time, more time because two months is too much. Two years should be too much. So, by 2022, I should be able to have my own airline. Some of you, you have built 10 mansions in your mind. You have owned estates already. Praise God, but you are making progress. Relax. Now you are tired. You are bearing more than you can carry. Or carry more than you can bear. Manage your expectations. See things from God's perspective. That's how to see things. This is why Joseph was never tired. There was something inside Joseph saying, there's a reason I'm in this Potiphar's house. There was something inside him saying, there's a reason I'm in this prison. And every time, he was showing that he believed that there was a reason he was there by serving with all his heart. 
That means that part time that you are, do everything you can do with all your art in that phase of life. Some of you are living in the future. It's not good. Stop it. You are getting tired. Joseph was living in the present. I'm in the present. See me preaching my heart out. My best sermon is now. Then the next one. Then the next one. Not that we said the stadium want to fill up. People even came late to church. People came late. People came early. Negative. Half cup. Half filled or half empty. Same cup. Half what? Some people say half filled. Some people say half empty. What you see is your choice. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life. So Joseph, by the time he entered into the prison, you see him again, serving with his heart. Serve with your heart part time. Love with your heart part time. Rejoice with your heart part time. Enjoy with your heart part time. Live where you are now. Stop living in the future. He didn't know the reason. No. All he just kept telling himself, God must have a reason. I can't be going through these challenges. I trust God with my destiny. It must be a step to this vision I had many years ago. Even though I don't know what it is. Until his brothers came. Even when he was elevated to the throne, it was still like a problem because he was in a foreign land and he had not been reunited with his family. But he kept saying there must be a reason. The day he set his eyes on his brothers, then he said, for this cause, did God send me ahead of you to preserve a seed for the future from the house of Israel? I want to know my purpose in life. Don't kill yourself. Where you are part-time, be doing God's will. Some people know their purpose ahead of time. Some don't know. Joseph did not know it until he saw his brothers. But he knew the principles of God that when I have not found purpose, at least God's word is purpose enough to keep me doing whatever my hands have found doing with all my might. Follow God's word. Don't enjoy yourself. You might be sounding spiritual, but you are frustrated already. Looking for purpose. What are you looking for? Purpose. Did he lost? Where did God keep him? He said, that's what I'm looking for. I've been looking for him. No. See God's perspective. That's seeing God's perspective. I like what David said. It was good that I was afflicted. In order that I might see your status. How can someone be talking like that? It is perspective. That I'm not saying I like affliction. But when affliction comes, that means promotion has come. So I can just be happy. Instead of asking God why, I can just expect to rise. The devil is a liar. Jesus is the Messiah. It is good that I deferred my admission. It is good that I had all those academic challenges. It is better. It's better than if God was allowing me to be passing. I would not have learned anything by now. It is good. In order that I might have a supernatural telegram student channel. Now it's almost 12,000. Just this short time of spreading is like the thing skyrocketed from 10,000 to almost 12,000. It shows you how many people have been onboarded because of what God is doing through you. That means almost 2,000 more people have been connected to the word of life because of what God is doing through you. But what is it? Perspective. So who knows what message is inside your mess? Who knows what gain is in that pain that you are going through? God has a story he wants to make out of that low thing that is happening to you. See things from God's perspective. If you keep doing like this, it will help you to keep showing up with strength. When they say that despite what he was going through, he kept showing up. It means that he never slacked in his duty. He was always there. So Paul said to the Galatians, in Galatians chapter 4, he said that, you know that through the infirmity of the flesh, I preach the gospel to you. This is the same Paul, that despite what I was going through, I was showing up. The thing that could have helped Paul to keep preaching the gospel, despite the infirmity of his flesh, is that perspective. I would rather glory in my infirmities so that the power of God will rest upon me. So things might be going bad, but I'm rejoicing because God's power rests upon me. Rejoice. When you are like this, worship will come out of you. When you see God's perspective on issues, you'll find yourself always giving God praise. You'll find yourself being able to say, Lord, whatever happens to me, I will give you thanks. Lord, whatever you give me, I will take. Whatever I see, I will not complain about you. I will never be offended. Even if they throw me into the prison, like Paul and Silas, if my mouth is too heavy to worship, I will start praying until I start singing. That's worship. And if you... Stay with this thing. Seeing God's perspective on issues. It will help you wait on God. And waiting on God is what will bring your answers. 
and it's what will bring strength to you. Have you not heard? Have you not seen? Don't you know that the everlasting God neither fainted nor does he grow weary? There's no searching of his understanding. The young man will faint. He gives might to them that are weak. He gives strength to those that faint. The young man may utterly fall. The youth might be weary, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. So the answer to the strength you are looking for is in your waiting on God. But you cannot wait on God if you are not willing to see God's perspective on issues. Because the thing that will be in a problem, I say I'm going to wait on God, is because I want to ask God, God, what do you want me to see? What do you want me to do? How do you want me to take on this challenge? Then you find yourself not even bothered by the problem. You find yourself waiting. And the Bible says it is a good thing that a man should both wait for the Lord and hope in him. The place that scripture is helps you understand what I'm saying. Lamentations. That somebody was lamenting. In the midst of it, he told you, no matter what is going on, it is good that a man should both hope and wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait for him. Be patient. Stop saying, I will recompense evil. Somebody wronged you. Now, you say, I will make sure I take my own pound of flesh. You will get tired. Leave it in God's hands. Wait on God. He will save you. Wait on the Lord. Keep his ways. Don't say that, I've been sowing. I've been praying. All these things, I'm even tired. Don't be tired. Keep his way. Then the Bible says, he will exalt you to inherit the land. If you keep his ways, he will exalt you to inherit the land. He will strengthen your heart. Wait on the Lord. He said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the glory of God in the land of the living. Our soul waits for the Lord. Our help is from him. He is our shield. That's how you should be speaking. My soul waits for the Lord. In his word do I hope. Stay in the word. Hope in his word. Lamentations 3.25 God is good to those that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him, it is both good that a man should wait for and hope in the Lord. Hope and quietly wait. It's not just the waiting, it's the quietness of the waiting. That I'm quiet, in quietness, in returning shall your rest be. We had challenges many years ago, 2015, 2016. It's as if the world was against us. Body of Christ against us. Everything was just upside down from every angle. But I will carry my bag and I'll be going. They will say, He has done this one again. No, God is my justifier. I waited for this God to justify me. Not once was I bitter. Somebody told me 10 years later that from that body where they were abusing me, that somebody there was her elder sister and told her ah, years later that one of the things that annoyed us about him was that he never answered us. I never came up on the pulpit to come and be saying, all those that are abusing us, that's not my job. Wait for the Lord. Let God do your speaking for you. This battle you are trying to fight, I didn't do it. You are trying to badmouth everybody because of something that you are trying to clear out. There's no need. Joseph became prime minister. He didn't even use his position to get Potiphar and his wife to go and confess and clear his name. God is the one that clears your name. My reputation is on with God. Leave it with God. He will fight for you. If God fights for you, you will beg him to reduce it on your enemy. If you know what it means for God to fight with you, God is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore shall my persecutors stumble. Their everlasting reproach will know no end. Somebody came and met me. People were against her. I said, Baal Perazim has risen for you. She called some weeks later. Please let me tell pastor to tell Baal Perazim to stop. He has finished everybody. Somebody sent me a message. Said they are ganging up against me. I said, God will judge them. Then, first person, Lule. Second person, Lule. By the time the last person that was disturbed, they called. Everybody is looking at me somewhere in my office. So, please stop this thing. I said, I didn't do anything. I just said, God will judge. And God is judging. Somebody told me that there's somebody in my place of work putting eyes for me. And I don't know what I did. I said, don't worry. God will rise for you. That's all I said. She called me one day. I said, please release her now. I said, Abba, am I even thinking about what you said to me? I just said, God, rise for you. What happened to the person? I said, since that time, the person has been in and out of hospital. I said, I did not do anything to the person. It's just that when people stand up against you, wait on the Lord. Stop trying to fight your battles. God knows how to take care of your battles. This energy you are using to fight battles, you can use it to do creative things. 
fighting people, fighting people. Now, your business, you have not been able to ideate for a long time. Now, your career, your entry into your office is as if you are working on eggshells every time. No peace of mind. This is how you believe in. Enough. Enough. Keep doing what you should do. Keep doing what you can do. Hallelujah. And do it with joy. Leave the outcomes with God. Let your rejoicing be in your actions, not in the outcome of things. God himself is my joy. He said, let him that rejoices and boasts, rejoice and boast in the fact that he knows God, not that God does some things for him. Knowing God is enough joy. See God's perspective on issues.